all right what's going on ladies and gentlemen you know who it is so right now behind me that's the cornell hospital helipad going where the nurses go to smoke um so as everybody knows my work is a very hot place to work 116 118 120 degrees all last week so after doing monday to thursday i wasn't feeling too well friday before going in for my afternoon shift so I called in because I had a fever, a little nauseous, and, you know, I just went to go get tested um, at a local COVID center here in Cornwall because to return back to work, I had to go get tested first. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so that's what I just did. It was a swab up the nose and a swab in the throat. So, not too bad. I was very thankful that it wasn't blood work because... Well, the last time we did our blood work at work, last two times, I was okay. But the first time I passed out right in front of the nurses, right on the fucking floor from like my standing position, boom, on the ground. Not good with blood. To me, blood is supposed to stay in your body. It is not supposed to come out. It's not supposed to be in a test tube. It's not supposed to be anything like that. So, when it was a nose test, fuck. I've had a lot of experience putting stuff up my nose, so that didn't scare me. And the throat swab is fucking nothing. That shit doesn't bug me, like I said, but... So yeah, I had to be tested for COVID. Pretty fucking cool. I don't mind. I know I don't have COVID. I know it's probably most likely heat, exhaustion, and mild dehydration because I say mild because I'm not dehydrated in the sense I'm not drinking enough. Uh, I was dehydrated in the sense that I was drinking a lot, but um, I was burning out. I was using more liquids, losing more liquids than my body had. You know, to be completely honest, I know that we burn more carbon dioxide and lose weight to our breath than we do water weight. I know that. But uh, the amount I was sweating was just insane. Just insane. So, what did I do before the COVID test? Well, I did some deep breathing through my nose. And, you know, um, I had to wear a mask, which I despise. But I was in a hospital and, you know, this is where the whole doing stuff for your job that you don't really want to have comes in. Like putting on a mask for a job I don't even like. I mean, sorry. It's not that I don't like my job. I do love my job and I like what I do and I think it's a, a damn good job to have. You know, I'm taking care of transformers that have PCB cancer causing um, oil chemicals in them, right? So the more work we put out, the more safe Canada is um, from cancer carcinogens that being said it's not always easy to go to work whenever my wife's at home and all my kids are at home it's not always easy going to work with you know my baby's only going to be three you know until she turns four and then she's only going to be four until she turns five so kind of sucks in that sense and you know my daughter's only going to be nine until she turns 10 my two boys you know are growing up so fast the oldest turns 15 this month and you know he wants to move in with his father because of many reasons. One, his father was never really in his life, so he wants to know his dad, and his dad's trying to change. Every time dad gets a new girlfriend, um, he tries to show off for that girlfriend. So, prior to him getting this girlfriend, um, he didn't have it want anything to do with the kids. They weren't going there at all. No contact, not even calls, nothing. And then Austin got mad at us, so he called his dad to ask if he could go there for the weekend. He does, uh, and he's mad at us because, you know, we got some of the new chores since we let him stay up um you know we hear him swear from time to time we don't do anything we let him stay up late we let him go wherever he wants we give him a later curfew than he probably should have just you know because he's having a hard time of it but at a certain point it's like okay well we give you enough we buy pay for enough and you know if you're not going to clean up for yourself if you're not even gonna put the bowl that we allowed you to eat on the couch if you're not even gonna put that in the fucking sink well enough's enough you know so but he gets mad at us for that and now he wants to move up so it's ultimately up to my wife, I told her, because in my opinion, I said, let's let him, let him go over there. And if his dad is really on board for it, then, you know, let's see how it plays out. But technically, um, technically, he's only turned 15 this year, and for your kid to choose where he wants to live, you have to be 16. So, he really has no, we don't have to let him, but like I told my wife, it's technically the summertime right now, and I used to say every year when I was somewhere like, why don't you ask your, guy, your dad if you could stay, you know, a week, a month, a few weeks, you know? 
more than just a, more than just a fucking weekend, make up for some lost time. But like he only has to take them every second weekend. And he hasn't even been doing that consecutive. And I can count on one hand the amount of times that he took them extra. So it's not like he's made up uh, in any way, shape, or form for all that time he's missed out on. But anyway, so that was my opinion. So anyways, all this being said, you know, my wife's at home trying to take care of stuff. And, you know, she's stressed out with the baby and all this. And, you know, the oldest does the clean up after himself. And what he says and does trickles down to the other two kids. So... You know it could be stressful and you know whoever's pissing her off at the moment might get to grow out of it and that's not right but that's basically how this shit works right so so you know that's kind of what i mean when i say uh a job i don't want to be at it's not that i don't like my job i like my job but with four children at home my wife you know struggling to fucking work and and take care of the kids and keep the baby happy and have sufficient help it's, it's not easy when i know that and then I get home and it's like, you know, I just, so, so much of my practice I need to do and devote time to. And with the kids home and not going to school, they're always bored and they always want more and they're never satisfied. You can buy them all the stuff they want. You know, fucking the novelty lasts only so long and then it's gone. So, I think I see her coming up here now. I hope that's her. That's I smoking on the side of the hospital right now in front of a cemetery. I normally hold my breath when we drive by cemeteries, but it's all good in the hood. Anyways, so yeah, I'll let you guys know if I have COVID or not, I guess. Hey, hey what's going on, y'all? So for everybody who wasn't sure if I'm involved, well, this will be a good episode for y'all. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not involved. Um, I am currently going to drive by my ex's house and see if he's outside and give him a few punches to the fucking face. <laughs> no, I don't know. I am driving by his house and I'll let the fucking... Uh, emotions that come through me do the fucking rest i guess um so yesterday i made a video no this is the same video rather but i did make the video yesterday recording myself after having my nose and my my nose and you can go when you're ready my nose and my throat swabbed for covid and i started recording myself after and then I said something to the effect of a job I hate. And then I wanted to really specify and state clearly that I do not hate my job. But what I meant by that was it's hard going somewhere when I know my wife is struggling at home. You know, she's working from home and she loves working from home. She's struggling because of the children, the baby, um, and my oldest. You know, my kids aren't having a good time of it. They're having a very, oh, fuck, her girl with white hair, she was tough. Anyways, um, they're having a hard time with it. My oldest, you know, my second oldest is also going through puberty, but he's in the first stages. Um, and my oldest oldest has had the growth spurt, had the voice change, has the facial hair coming in. So he's like hormone city right now, okay? It's different for everybody. And as far as I can tell, he's done all the physical changes. And right now he's going through the emotional, hormonal, mental state of puberty that happens for both men and women. Women earlier than men. Um, being that he turns 15 this month so he's going through the like that ending stages because man he's six foot he's got to be i mean he's at least three inches taller than me and i'm six nine and a half to six, or six nine i wish five nine and a half to five ten i think i'm definitely i'm over always over five ten when i wear my shoes but i measured myself before and you know looking down i'm like five nine and a half. so you know i'm probably very close five nine and three quarters oh, like it matters like it fucking matters it doesn't fucking matter but um, like age, your height, and your size. It depends on how you look inside. But what you feel and look inside will display on the outside. Does that mean you can get rid of a fucking shorter limb than the other one? Probably, if you imagine it long enough. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to change your hair or your eye color. Now, there are things that say they can do that. And, you know, I've never looked them up, so I can't tell you they don't work. But I'm guessing somewhere down the line there is some spiritual truth to the change in the eye color and all that and then people have taken those principles put them on their channel without actually practicing it like damn um, armchair occultism and then condensing it to some easy fucking get your eye color get fucking change something fast fucking scheme and there's bullshit to it and or someone trying to make you believe there's bullshit to it um, because if you're going to change your eye color your hair color using spiritual means it's going to take time and it's going to take dedication and discipline. So, once again, I haven't looked into it, so 
I don't need to change my eye color. I love the fact that my eyes are both mostly green, but the one eye has more blue and the other has more brown. I love that my eyes are two different fucking colors. I absolutely love it. For a while, I thought it was weird and stupid, but my eyes, is, people from far will say, oh, he's got blue eyes. No, he's got green eyes. No, he's got brown eyes. I fucking love that. And especially when I was doing illegal shit, whenever people went to give a description of my eyes, like, who can fish shit out of you? Oh, uh, he had blue eyes. No, he had green eyes. No, he had brown eyes. Ha <laughs> ha, motherfuckers. Oh, uh, he was tall. No, he wasn't that tall. He was average. Uh, you know, a five nine and a half shit comes into play because someone who's only five foot thinks I'm tall. Someone who's five ten is gonna say I'm fucking short. Especially a man, they're gonna say I'm shorter than I actually am. So, it is what it is. Um, but yeah. So my oldest is having a hard time of it. Um, thing he just broke up with his girlfriend too, and they seemed like they really liked each other. And, you know, he was, she was a good girl. Fuck, she was a good girl. Um, she seemed like she was a good girl. Anyways. But, none the fucking less, it is what it is. Fuck, I want to pound this fucking asshole in so hard to the fucking ground. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to wait till I drive a little further in the house. My wife just texted me like, don't you fucking do anything fucking stupid. Get yourself in trouble. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. I'll fucking tell the clock. Yeah, I kicked the shit out of him. Yeah. He's a fucking criminal piece of shit. Yeah, I used to be a criminal piece of shit. Maybe you still think I am. Whatever. But he bought his fucking 14, about to turn 15-year-old kid, fucking vaping fucking thing with the cartridges. And, you know, like an, I, you know, like an idiot, instead of getting him the fucking vape without nicotine, he gives him the fucking vape with nicotine. Yeah, that's how fucking bright this fucking deadbeat fucking stepdad of my fucking two stepboys is. He buys his fucking oldest vape. Vaping fucking thing and fucking whatever. You know, just so fucking stupid. You know, you really want to make up for lost time? You fucking spend time with your kid. Don't go buy him shit and fucking send him outside to fucking hang out with his friends and then, you know, tell him you can stay there for a week and kick him out the last two days because you need time alone because you don't have the one kid you have custody of. So, you need a break. Like, go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. Man, he deserves a fucking shit fucking kicking. Like, he's got his ass kicked a few times, and he won't fucking admit it. He tells people, oh, no, they jumped me. Oh, it was unfair. It was all this. And the one time he went to fucking fight me, the fucking pussy pulls out a fucking crowbar. I was taking care of the kids at the time. I had the two boys and my two girls. My girl, my one baby was just a baby, too. Like, not even a year old yet. So, when he comes out with a crowbar... I had to think smart and be like, you know, he hits me with this crowbar, I'm out cold, I can't take care of these kids. And then I have to explain to my wife, like, yeah, I let Noel hit me in the face with a crowbar and take the two boys. You know, that wasn't something that was going to happen. So I stopped and said, you know, you can fight with a crowbar like a bitch if you want, but well, two things are going to happen. You're going to fucking miss and I'm going to beat the shit out of you with that crowbar. And I don't want that because I'm going to jail for assault with a weapon because that's different from just fighting somebody who came to my house to fight me. That'd be look like self, that'd look like discipline. Either way, I don't give a shit about all that. I don't call the cops after a fucking fight, but this guy's a bitch. He probably would, right? If he wins, he wouldn't call the cops. If he loses, he's definitely going to call the cops. He's a pussy like that. So I said that, or you're going to hit him in the face, you're going to beat the shit out of me, and then you're going to go back to jail. Because at that time, he was on charges for uh, pointing a fucking BB gun or a pellet gun or an airsoft rifle at people down by the fucking uh, water here. He was on charges for uh, things he might have done, CAS, like hitting kids, hitting his kid. He was on charges for hitting his current girlfriend who was pregnant with his newest kid he doesn't see right now. Yeah, a real fucking winner this fucking loser is. Um, but, you know, I, I tried to stick up for Austin and I even tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. I said that. Maybe he has tried. I've always tried to not do this. I know deep inside, like, my two-step boys, uh, they love me. And we're tight, and I've been there since they were babies. Owen was two, Austin was three, and or sorry, Owen was two, Austin was four when I met them. So I've known them since they were small, and I've spent more time with these kids than he has. But nonetheless, this is their biological father. They have ties to him. So even though up until the last week of June, he hadn't seen them this whole time, and he wasn't even using COVID. You know, maybe if he was smart, he would say, "Well, COVID guys, maybe we shouldn't come in contact." Cause I have a new girlfriend, and you know, she's definitely not family with you, so you shouldn't come in contact with her and everybody should come up, you know, safely. And that would have been legitimate, and you know, you can actually use that as a few. No, he just stopped talking to them, didn't want to talk with them. And you know, I'm going out the boat with grandma this weekend, your grandmother, but uh, you guys can't come because I want I need a break. And 
just stupid shit where Austin was pissed off at him, hated him. But then, whenever Austin was mad at us, he went there, like I said, and then everything was just a-okay. His dad just blamed everything on him, put on a show. Maybe he meant All right, I'm a little more calm now. Uh, I'm not quite at home yet, but I'm going to be home soon. Um, but yeah, what I was trying to get at is, I know that if I was to do anything to the boy's father, their biological father, even if they're mad at him, let's say they both hate him right now, which Owen doesn't want to see him ever again because Owen kicked him out. Owen decided to bike down there on one of his brothers because he's got two other brothers. One, Tristan is the one Noel has custody of because his, his, the mother of Tristan actually is worse than him, which is saying a lot, right? Like tracks, like, right? This is a shit, this is a shit, which, you know, my wife met him whenever they were in high school, so my wife is in a piece of shit. And in high school, he just started smoking pot and whatever else whenever she decided to sleep with him. But, you know, high school going, going through puberty, it's not like she had all of her fucking, all the sense and all the smarts that she has now, right? And I'm not dissing my wife. She's fucking smarter than I am, that's for sure. But nonetheless, the point is, you know, he attracted a mate similar to him. Now, the girl in that, then he got pregnant with the Tristan boy that he has in his house. That's my two step boys, his brother, and they have a younger brother who's just a baby, probably a year, maybe two years old, but I don't think he's two years, two years old yet. And that's with the girlfriend, or the ex-girlfriend, that he was on charges for putting up against the wall, choking, throwing on the ground, pushing down a flight of stairs while she was pregnant. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Now, with my wife, whenever she left him, the kicker was the one day, she he actually pushed her while she was pregnant for Owen, I think. Or it might have been after, but it was somewhere around either she just gave birth to Owen or she was pregnant for Owen. And she left and he called her, okay, oh, commit suicide, you know, come back, blah, blah, blah. So smartly, she said, yeah, okay, let's start with a fresh slate. I'll come by and you just sign some papers and then, yeah, we'll move back in together. We'll get maybe your mom to help us, whatever. And he said, yeah, no problem. I made a whole episode about this shit, uh, about my wife and all the shit she's been through. But in a nutshell, he got her to sign those papers. Yeah, she went down there and said, yeah, I need to sign these papers. He signed his name on them, and she said, thank you, go fuck yourself, I'm never gonna come near you again, you just signed the way you're fucking right to your kids. I was like, wow, she's smart. I mean, that's devious, that's fucking, and you know what, like, her mother, his mother, doesn't do anything with the two boys. You know, the only time she used to call for them was when they were under 12, and she could take them to the Christmas party, because she wanted all her grandkids at her Christmas party, because she's uh, some, She's not high up, but she's some desk jockey at uh, one of the, the factories here in Cornwall, FCM. And so she wanted to put the whole persona, I'm a great grandmother, here's all my grandkids, they come with me every year. And that's the only time she would see them without Noel, without the fucking father. Other than that, she would never call and do anything. And you know, we made the mistake a few times saying, maybe we'll call Joan, we need a babysitter. Nobody from my family, my mother babysat those boys way more times than their actual mother, grandmother, right? So, and my mother's a biological, she buys them more gifts and pays for more stuff and does more things with them than their biological grandparents, okay, combined. Like, I got nothing against his father. He's changing his life, he's doing a great job, he's a fucking, he's a great man. He had issues in the past, we all fucking do. But I've always got along with him and he knows, he doesn't even talk to Noel anymore. Noel actually tried to kill him. When I won Christmas, there, you know, I was drinking and, you know, Dan's like, you know, well, how you get when you drink? Well, please don't drink as much. Or if you can, just sip on a few beers. Oh, yeah, don't worry, Dad, I won't get bad. And obviously, he's fucking like 10 beers deep, and probably some shots, probably a bunch of dope. And he says, okay, Noel, you're getting a little rowdy, but before something bad happens, I'm going to have to use it as well. And out of nowhere, he just starts choking him. And if it wouldn't have been for, I think it was Kyle or somebody else, one of Noel's brothers, saw him doing that and stopped him. Yeah, he's a fucking winner now. This is the same guy that tried... He was on charges that, at the same time I was talking about prior to this there, he was on charges with all those things with the kids, his ex, and the BB gun thing. Well, he drank and drove, was on Xanax, and crashed in near long suit because he was leaving because he got in the fight. I think this is the same day he choked his girlfriend, his pregnant girlfriend at the time, and he left drunk, and that was the reason they fought. She didn't want him to leave. She tried to hit the keys. He fucking pushes her, pushes her against the wall, choking him, just like he did to his father, right? Um, and then he crashes, so that's karma, baby crashes the car, when the OPP comes over to see if he's okay, he snaps, tries to take the OPP's gun from him. OPP puts him down, because he's a bitch, right? And he's already drunk and on shit, so not like he can fucking do anything really good. Even when he's sober, the guy's a piece of shit, a slow fucking ass, fat fuck. But, you know, OPP fucks him down. But you know what, he still tried to take the OPP's gun. OPP actually came here, not long after that, because Noel came here for the fight, and then he waited till I wasn't home another time, and came and tried threatening my wife and all this other bullshit. So she called the police, because I don't call the police, but she called the police. OPP came instead of the Cornwall police. 
because they wanted to build a case against him to put his ass away. He actually went to jail for about eight months and got off. He was on charges for six different things, all assault. Assaulting a police officer, assaulting his child, assaulting his ex, assaulting his ex-baby mama, my wife, assaulting, oh yeah, uh, attempt assault with a weapon there with the gun in the face. All assault charges. You think this motherfucker would go for a long time, but no, like gets eight months and gets off. Got a horse rope his ass, right? Who knows? But, and nonetheless, the point is, if I was to hurt their father, their biological father, even if they were mad at him, they still would hate me for it. It would ruin my relationship with them. And I know that. But I still want to punch him in the face. Because he deserves it. He deserves it. He needs to know that it's not okay to try to win his kids, try to win the battle against his, his ex, my wife, by giving his kids things that they're not allowed to have. Being that cool parent that'll buy them. You, know, you want to buy him a porno mag, buy him a porno mag. You know, there's no secret there. He's going through puberty. He's not old enough to buy a porno mag. He needs to release and fucking masturbate and shit like that. Whatever. That's a whole different level. But what he's doing is wrong. Buying nicotine, a drug for a child, should not be doing that. You can't fucking do that. It's wrong. It's illegal. And it's bad fucking parenting. Yet, that's what he's doing. He needs to know. And how else is he going to learn a lesson if someone like me doesn't come and dish out his fucking karma for him? You know, I can call the police, but that's not my style. I don't plan on doing that. And there's nothing they can do. They'd have to catch it in the act. He'd have to agree to it. And he's probably not that stupid. He might be. But he's probably not that stupid. He probably won't just say, yeah, I bought uh, nicotine for a minor. Because you do that at a corner store. If you get caught at a corner store, if a cop goes in there, and or a cop sends a minor in there, you know, like a sting, sends a minor in there to buy a pack of smokes, and that store sells a pack of smokes. As soon as that kid comes out with the smoke, the cop goes in there and charges them. And that's legal. That's dirty. And that's one of the reasons I don't like the police system, because they use criminal activity to catch criminals. That's that's dirty. You can't use the same thing that you're against. I don't know. It seems wrong. But anyways, so there's, there's no karma that's going to be dished out for this. And because the way my wife went about it and not allowing him to go there and live there, which I'm thankful of because I didn't have this information. I didn't know Noel was buying him shit. And you know, it's just a matter of time because he smokes weed, he's on Ritalin because um, he's addicted to cocaine and shit like that, on top of amphetamines, on top of uh, Xanax, and on top of opiates. So he's going to a methadone clinic. Before marijuana was legal here, he had a marijuana license because when you go to a methadone clinic, if you want one, they'll give you a marijuana license so you can smoke marijuana instead of doing other drugs. So he had that, he had that, he had that. So it's a matter of time before he says, yeah, here, Austin, have a beer, it's no problem. Here, Austin, have a cigarette, it's no problem. And you already gave him the vaping thing. And then a matter of time, so he says, here, Austin, have some fucking weed, it's not a problem. As much as I know, Austin may, probably not, because he's against that stuff. Or he used to be, I don't know anymore. But he was very against drugs and drinking. But it's a matter of time before he sees his father doing these things, laughing, having a good time, that programming will set in, and then his dad is not the type that won't say it. Like, it's one thing for Austin to go behind his dad's back and steal his prescribed marijuana, or his prescribed opiates, or his prescribed methadone, and you know, he's locking up doing everything right, and if Austin goes behind his back and steals, that's on Austin. But it's a whole other thing for him to openly offer it to his son, like a piece of shit dad would. You know, you tell your kids, you give them, the scenarios and you tell them the dangers and you tell them why they shouldn't do stuff and you give them the experience that you've been through but ultimately it's up to them you can't protect them from everything you got to prepare them for these things but giving him weed giving him nicotine vape things giving him alcohol all that shit is something noel would do now i was in the assumption that noel was and was changing and wasn't doing any of this and that's the way austin made it sound to me he lied but that's a whole other fucking ballgame i'm not very happy with austin right now either um, trying to lie to go there because dad will let him do all these cool things but anyways yeah so uh, this is why I'm upset and if I kick the shit out of him it's going to ruin our relationship because you know what a dog doesn't have the neocortex like we do they only they are only like a subconscious mind which is why you got to repetitively train a puppy when they're a puppy for 21 days or longer to get their training in their head you can't teach an old dog new tricks this is why because unless you're going to tell this old dog every day not to do whatever new habit they're starting. So your dog starts going in your garden every day. Well, every day you need to tell that dog, no. No. You need to remind them every single day for at least probably a month or longer because they're an older dog now. So it's like trying to teach an old person something. They're not going to get in their head. Think of it as uh, Alzheimer's. If 
teaching a dog is like teaching somebody with Alzheimer's to do something. The only difference is the person with Alzheimer's after 30 days probably still wouldn't remember it, whereas this dog would. Where the fuck was I going with that? I don't even know. I had a I had a point to that fucking uh, that point to that fucking system, but I don't know where the fuck I was going with that. But anyways, I'll look back on this and I'll fucking figure it out. Oh yeah, that's where I was going with it. So, but like a dog, if you want to get that lesson in there fast, and I'm not saying to hit your dog, and I'm not saying it's right to hit your dog, but the only way is to get the limbic system and the fucking because you can say subconscious mind and conscious mind all you want. But eventually, when you want to really understand the mind, how something can beat it, you need to use, this is why Birch says, to get a sigil in the mind, you need to either use pain, put a big lighter to your hand, or pleasure, jerk off and get it in your mind. Most people take the jerk off, right? Why? Well, it's because of these things, is absolute pleasure, absolute pain. These things will force it into your mind faster. You will learn faster, you will get the subconscious mind active, it will, that sigil will go in your mind faster if you pick light of your hand while you're staring at it. Because, like I said earlier, your mind takes a picture of everything around it whenever you are in too much fear or too much positive emotion. It'll, it takes two seconds, mostly fear though. It takes one second backwards. So you don't remember the thing that happened whenever you put, whenever, you know, when you're overwhelmed with so much fear, right? So something, you fucking break your arm or whatever caused you to break your arm, if it's so, if it's overwhelming and you're scared at the time or whatever, that much pain is going to make your mind back loop one second and you're not going to know what actually caused you to break your arm. I got a story about this too. I broke my arm as a kid. As I was climbing up the tree ladder, I grabbed a place where there's two carpets that this is where I always pull up my arm while my sister and her friend put two carpets there. I pulled myself up, carpets are like, going oh, go down. That's what I remember. But before that happened, my sister told me to not put my hands there. Before that happened, I forget. There's three other things she told me. I don't remember. None of it. Why? Because as I got into fear coming down, I was scared. So I don't remember the whole way down. The one memory I have is when I stopped coming down, I hit something on the tree, caught me on the armpit. That thing gave up. Then I hit the ground softly. Saved my life, basically, because I might have died because it was high enough. Probably not. I was leaning towards my feet until that thing hit me and then I landed on my back. And they took me through back injuries because I had to scrape up my side from where the board hit me until it caught me here. But that's what I remember. I don't remember the fall. I remember putting my hands there. I don't remember those things letting go. Your mind stops. One second's a long time when you're falling and, and you're going through pain. Trust me. Holy fuck. One second of pain is long. Go through fucking withdrawal. Buddy, that shit's hard. But that's the point. So if you take a big lighter to your hand while you put that sigil in, it's going to go in there. Arguably better than the jerk off method. Just jerking off you do all the time. You know that feeling, you're used to it. It may not be even as good as sex. So you need to amp up that fucking pleasure if you're doing that all the time, you're gonna get sigils in your mind, it's not happening anymore. But that's why. I mean if you do it repetitively and you jerk off every day for twenty one days with the same sigil, it might not even be the jerking off putting it in your mind, it might be the affirmation route. But point is if you hit your dog and I'm not saying to because this is wrong and I don't believe in it, but if you were to hit your dog and tell them to not do this, it might work better than the 21 to 30 days telling your dog not to do the thing, because it's a shortcut to get something in your mind. So that's what I'm trying to do to Noel. I'm trying to pound his face in while he fucking realizes I'm pounding his face in for what he did. Now, he won't subconsciously remember maybe the reason why. If I scream at him, I'm hitting you in the face right now because of what you did and gave Austin that thing, he's not gonna know that. But every time he goes to give Austin nicotine going forward, He's gonna stop and not do it because his mind's gonna say, no, back loop, this means Corey's gonna punch you in the face if you do this. So I'm using a type of magic on him. This is why fighting can stop people from doing things. It's not a good long-term solution, but hell, it's a good short-term solution because what happens the next time Austin's van, he walks out of the house, goes for a walk, or he has money, and he decides to go give his dad his money to buy him a fucking thing. You think dad's gonna say, no, I don't wanna do that? No, he wants Austin to be his friend, his buddy. He wants him to move in there. He wants to try to take the baby bonus we get for Austin. He wants to stop paying the $50 a month he pays for one kid. Yeah, cheap bastard on disability, which is not even disabled. He works under the table fucking two months. He'll take three months off and he'll get a job for two months. He'll take another three months off and get a job for two months. And then it's Christmas starts so it doesn't work. And then he'll do that every fucking year just to get extra money every once in a while. So he's able to work, but he's a piece of shit. But anyways, that's just a little bit about how I am polarized with my kids, my stepkids, my family. 
I can be as depolarized as I want. I can think of them as evolved as I want. But when someone fucks with my kids, their health, they're at risk. They're plotting against me and my wife or trying to do something stupid. And they don't have the best interests of my children involved. I am fucking polarized. And I'm ready to beat the shit out of this cocksucker. Even though I know it's stupid and it won't work. And I'm trying to justify it. Justify it using some magical fucking sigil fucking fear base kick the shit out of him so he learns his lesson karma shit but it really doesn't make sense if i really think about it but nonetheless you're gonna make anything almost make sense to you if you want to and that's what i'm doing right now but i better get home anyways hope you enjoyed have a good day all right so the moral of the whole fucking story is your teachers gurus people on youtube i'm not a teacher i'm not a guru i'm not pretending to be so but i am actively working on depolarization so things like this don't happen. So I don't go and snap on somebody in a lineup. So I don't do road rage. You know, this is a little different. It's your children. And you always gonna feel protective of your children. Once again, I said it before, I'm not gonna be very much good to my girls. If someone comes to the house and takes my girls, I run out, I'm thinking I gotta save them. They should have put out their side pistol, sidearm, blow my fucking head off, right? Kind of what I'm going through right now. Wanting to run to his fucking house, kick the shit out of him. Not necessarily a fight or flight response, but generally, maybe it is a fear response. Maybe it is because I'm fearful he's harming my children. So it's activating that. Point is, go buy yourself a bunch of times trying to fight. I'm not gonna lie, but anyone working on depolarization, anyone who says they're who is still gonna have these spots. Even elites that people think rule the world, people that are in governmental positions, whatever the case also are going to have these areas where you can manipulate use a smart magician stays calm and doesn't get in the state because once you're in the state you can be manipulated see by me wanting to go down there and kick his ass i give him the power either i kick his ass he calls a cop puts me in jail he's got the power he's affected me i'm pissed off he's got the power i can do something stupid and hurt my fucking family because he's affected me and then he's got the power and can call children's aid whatever the case is point is by him affecting me he has the power and that's what you want to eliminate as much as possible now it's gonna be very hard when it comes to your family and people harming your family for you to not do this and that's the point of this whole video and story it's a true story it's what's going on right now with me so it's another test of course not just for me, for my son, for my wife, for everybody, even fucking for Noel probably. He doesn't even know he's being used in this way to test us, but he is. And this is how it works. So when you get your test, don't just put, push magic aside or your transformation or your self-improvement work, whatever, your self-help work, whatever you're doing. When you have these tests, don't push that shit aside and be like, sorry, I gotta take a break. I gotta deal with this. This is real world stuff, then I'll get back to this. No, this is part of it. This is part of your transformation and it's important. I'll let you know how I play it out. Hopefully I don't see him before I can, you know, detox from this emotional response I'm having right now. So I guess it all depends on, you know, if Austin stops or not. It's probably gonna come into play because if he decides not to stop, but then I'm probably gonna hold a grudge. And if I hold the grudge, it's, that's against what I'm supposed to do. I don't hold grudges. I never have really held grudges all that much in my life. I can, uh, that, when I thought I was mostly Taurus, which is I have a lot of Taurus in my horoscope using the Vedic one, but not as much as using the tropical one. But um, Tauruses don't really hold grudges. But when they do get upset at somebody, they fucking charge at them. Meaning, when I, I don't get, it takes a lot to get pissed off. But when I get pissed off, I get pissed off. And that's still true. Um, being that Taurus is in a bunch of different places within my horoscope with different plants. And, but anyways, point of all this is fucking hot out. That doesn't help either, but... I'm trying to give you this experience to teach you. I gave you some information in there. I made some mistakes, like I said, discipline instead of self-defense and uh, I was talking about the limbic system and I fucking said some wrong shit, one second, two seconds. The way it works for your mind when you experience too much fear, it, it's so mo it triggers the limbic system. The emotion of fear triggers it and it tells the reptilian brain to put you in fight or flight, but it has a process where it stops. It goes one second backwards and this time space continuum, whatever, you know, it's 9.59 right now in 58 seconds, or it goes back 9.59.57 seconds, right, as that one second period, so it's 60 milliseconds or whatever it is, adds up to one second. During that time where you experience that one thing that caused all that emotion to happen, what well, goes back from one thing, erases that from the memory that you can access, and then 
it implements a triggering basically and that's what i was trying to explain about if i punch him in the face for this reason this will be a trigger and it will trigger him to not do this going forward and that's how i was trying to justify kicking his ass still not right but kind of makes a little sense but anyways have a good fun